Hi everyone, it's Andrew Whitehouse here, and this week we're talking about a bit of an unspoken issue in the area of autism, and that's self-injury. Now, previous studies estimate that up to 50% of kids and adults on the autism spectrum uh, hit, bite, or scratch themselves. Now, of course, this is not a good thing at all, and we need to get to the bottom as to why this occurs. Now, one theory that's been around for a long time is that self-injury might actually be the result of subconsciously learned behavior. So, for example, a minimally verbal individual might find that self-injury is a way to uh, get the attention of a caregiver and express or communicate anger or frustration. The study we've linked to this week sought to provide a bit of clarity in this area. Now what the study did is it collected data on over 400 children and adults on the autism spectrum. Now the main finding was that self-injury was more common among individuals uh, who had a health problem such as skin uh, problems or digestive problems as well as uh, individuals who had uh, impulse control or what we call uh, difficulties with impulse control or what we call impulsivity problems. Now, this finding is important because it actually uh, puts to bed a, uh, an unfounded, that unfounded theory that uh, children on the autism spectrum actually self-injure for attention. What, instead, what this uh, uh, finding says is that self-injury might be the result of a perfect storm where children and adults on the autism spectrum might have a health problem that causes them discomfort, but they also have impulse control problems, so they're actually having difficulty managing the communication of these health problems. Now, of course, this isn't going to be uh, the same for all individuals on the autism spectrum, but what I think is that this study provides a us a little bit of insight as to what might be a cause of self-injury in some individuals on the autism spectrum.